Good day everyone, I am Brittany Alayaay and I am here to discuss the common and ethical practices of business establishments. Lesson Objectives At the end of the lesson, B. The students are expected to A. Familiarize at the common and ethical practices of business establishments such as misrepresentation and overpersuasion. B. Describe how direct and indirect misrepresentation is committed by business firm and how do these two types of misrepresentation differ from each other. C. Describe how overpersuasion becomes unethical and letter D. Describe some unethical corporate practices. Common Unethical Practices of Business Establishments Unethical problems in business ethics occur in many forms and types. The most common of these unethical practices of business establishments are misrepresentation and overpersuasion. Misrepresentation is classified into two types. First is the direct misrepresentation. So, Direct misrepresentation is characterized by actively misrepresenting about the products or customer. This includes, first is the deceptive packaging. So deceptive packaging is one of the practices that the business firms do in their business, wherein they are placing the product in containers of exaggerated sizes and misleading shapes to give a false impression of its actual contents. So, dito sa deceptive packaging, isa sa mga example nito is yung mga cartons, tin cans, and certain plastic. So, yun yung deceptive packaging. The product is placed in an exaggerated sizes of packaging in order to give a false information of its actual content. Misbranding or mislabeling. Misbranding is the practice of making false statements on the label of a product or making its container similar to a well-known product. So, sa makatuwid, misbranding or mislabeling is practiced in some business establishments wherein they are giving or putting a false information about their products. And yung iba pa nga, hinahawig nila yung kanilang packaging or container dun sa mga kilala ng mga products para maloka nila yung kanilang mga customer base sa kanilang mga nagiging benta doon sa product na meron sila and sa quality na meron yung product nila. False or misleading advertising Advertising serve as a useful purpose if it conveys the right information. It is the principal means by which people are informed about the availability on when and where the product is available, nature and uses of old and new products, the improvement or innovation made about the products. Advertising conveys information to the customer about the products that is in the market. But it is said that advertising does not always Tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth if it greatly exaggerates the virtues of a product. But instead, it only tells half of the truth or else sings praises to its non-existent virtues. So, if our advertising does not provide a useful service anymore to the customer, it can become the agent of misrepresentation. Some examples of false or misleading advertising is yung mga patalastas wherein persons gives their impressions about products' reliability and quality with exaggerations about their statements. And also, another example is advertisement that claims that the product is the fastest selling brand or the product of the year. Adulteration. Adulteration is one of the unethical practice wherein business establishments debasing a pure or genuine commodity by imitating or counterfeiting it. 
by adding something to increase its bulk or volume, or by substituting an inferior product for a superior one for the purpose of gaining a profit. It is unethical because an inferior product is passed off as a superior one. This does not meet the standard for fair service, that is achieving success by offering better service than the competitor. Weight understatement or short weighing. In short weighing, the mechanism of the weighing scale is tampered with or something is unobtrusively attached to it so that the scale registered more than the actual weight. An example is a foot pedal with a concealed string tied to the weighing scale. So, weight understatement or short weighing is practiced by business establishments in selling products like sugar, meat, fish, vegetables, fruits, nails, because it is the mechanism wherein weighing scale is manipulated in order to register more than the actual weight. So, this kind of products will depend on weight. So, we can say that a product is in their actual weight even though it is understated or it is not in their actual weight. So, the modus operandi of the sellers in order not to cut by the authorities or the government is to use two sets of scales one which gives the correct weight and has been sealed by the authorities and another which looks identical but register more weight than the product. Measurement understatement or short measurement. In short measurement, the measuring stick or standard is shorter than the real length or smaller in volume than the standard. So since we have the idea in weight understatement or short weighing, wherein weighing scale is tampered in order to register more scale or more weight than the actual weight. In short measurement, business establishment uses measuring stick that is shorter than the real length. This unethical practice of measurement understatement or short measurement is found in selling situation of cloth or textile, electric cord or wires, selling of rice by sack, wherein the price of the product depends on its length or on its volume. It is unethical because sellers gives customers the inappropriate amount or measurement than the actual or the right one. Quantity understatement or short numbering. After discussing weight understatement or short weighing wherein weighing scale is tampered in order to register more weight than the actual weight and in measurement understatement or short measurement wherein business establishment use measuring stick that is shorter than the real length Quantity understatement or short numbering is an unethical practice wherein seller gives the customer less than the number asked for or paid for. Short numbering is often practiced in selling situation wherein the product being sold is in such a shape or is packed in a manner that would make counting the product difficult or inconvenient. Example ng unethical practice of quantity understatement or short numbering is a situation wherein a customer may receive a less quantity than what he is entitled to when buying a toilet paper, bun paper, carbon paper, paper clips, thumbtacks, matches, and toothpicks which are sold by the box or package. So, it is unethical practices because the seller gives the customer less than the number asked for or paid for the quantifiable items that the customer bought to him or her. 
the most common practices involving indirect misrepresentations are caveat emptor, deliberate withholding of information, and business ignorance. So now let's proceed to caveat emptor. By the way, caveat emptor means let the buyer beware. So caveat emptor is a practice very common to salesmen or saleswomen. Under this concept, the seller is not obligated to reveal any defect in the product or services he is selling. But instead, it is the responsibility of the customer to determine for himself the defects of the product. In this practice, only the good part of the product is introduced to the customer. Cavit emptor is unethical because the seller is a witness for the goods he is selling. He testified to its nature, features, uses, and qualities. And as a witness, it is his obligations and responsibility to tell the truth and nothing but the truth about his product. What makes Kavit Emptor unethical is the willingness of the seller to generate profit by taking advantage of the buyer's lack of information and giving only the information that is good. Kavit Emptor is unethical because the seller is a witness for the goods he is selling. He testified to its nature, features, uses, and qualities. And as a witness, it is his obligations and responsibility to tell the truth and nothing but the truth about his product. What makes Kavit Emptor unethical is the willingness of the seller to generate profit by taking advantage of the buyer's lack of information. The next common practice is the deliberate withholding of information. Since Kavit Emptor is unethical for being a witness and having an obligation to say the truth and nothing but the truth, the deliberate withholding of significant information in a business transaction is also unethical. There must be transparency in both parties. No business transaction is considered fair where one of the parties does not exactly know what he is giving away or receiving in return. The last common practice under indirect misrepresentation is the passive deception. Direct misrepresentation gives business a bad name, while indirect misrepresentation or passive deception is not as obvious. It contributes to the impression that the businessmen are liars and are out to make a fast buck. Business ignorance is a passive deception because the businessman is unable to provide the customer with the complete information that the latter needs to make a fair decision. Over-persuasion Persuasion is the process of appealing to the emotions of a prospective customer and urging him to buy an item of merchandise he needs. It is the act of persuading a person to buy some products or services that you are offering. Persuasion is legitimate and necessary in selling of goods if it is done in the interest of buyers such as persuading him to get a hospitalization insurance policy. So this act of persuading must consider the interest of buyer the products or services of the business. However, persuasion used for the sole benefit of selling a product without considering the interest of the buyer is not ethical. The common instances of over-persuasion include the following examples. First is urging a customer to satisfy a low-priority need for merchandise. So, over-persuasion is now considered a unethical because Pinipilit mo yung customer mo, nabili yung merchandise mo, even though it is not his or her priority. 
Meaning to say, you are just focusing on yourself na magkaroon ka ng benta. Next is playing upon intense emotional agitation to convince a person to buy. It is unethical to over-persuade or pilitin mo yung customer mo bumili ng product mo because nangailangan ka. Last is convincing a person to buy what he does not need just because he has the capacity or money to do so. It is also considered unethical because you are persuading him to buy something that he doesn't need. Meaning to say, you are after the money and not for the benefit of what you are selling to the customer. Keep in mind that over-persuasion for the sole benefit of selling a product without considering the interest of the buyer is unethical. Once again, good afternoon. My name is Hazel Araneta and my topic for this report is under the Corporate Ethics which is entitled Unethical Practices of Corporate Management. So we have two classifications. Number one is practices of the board of directors and, and practices of executive officers. So let's begin with some unethical practices of the board of directors. Number one is flame graph. It happens when some of the board of directors help themselves or other stockholders to earn more than the value of their services. For example, example, they can receive large salaries or big bonuses. They can also reduce the earnings of other shareholders. Number two is interlocking directorship. It happens for those directors or a person who holds two or more corporations that do, that do business with each other. This practice may involve conflict of interest and can result to disloyal selling. So, this loyal selling, nangyayari ito kapag kailangan mamili ni director aling company yung kailangan niyang i-prioritize or protectahan. So, at the end of the day, kapag namili, kapag namili siya, it means he betrays the trust of other company. The number three is insider trading. It happens when a broker or another person with access to confidential information uses that information to trade in shares and securities of a corporation, thus giving him an unfair advantage over the other purchasers of these securities. Then number four is negligence of duty. A more common failure of the members of the board of directors is neglect of duties when they fail to, at to attend board meetings regularly. It is only in regular attendance that they can protect the rights and interests of the shareholders and their non-attendance of the board meetings could result to betrayal of trust of the parties who elected them to their positions. Now let's move to some unethical practices of executive officers and lower level managers. Of course, hindi lang naman mga higher positions yung may kayang gumawa ng unethical practices. Sabi dito, executive officers and lower level managers are also capable of doing such unethical practices na ginagawa ng mga board of directors. But here are some unethical practices that are more common to executive officers and lower level managers. Number one is claiming a vacation trip to be a business trip. For example, the president or vice president reports his personal vacation in Europe or in US as a business trip so he can get reimbursement for his expenses including those of his families. Number two is having employees do work unrelated to the business. Executive officers and lower level managers ask company employees to do personal things for them on company time such as having the janitors water and mow their lawns, having the maintenance men do house or appliance repairs for them, and having subordinate employees secure a license or type letters pertaining to their other businesses. The third one is loose or ineffective controls. One of the 
unethical practices is when the managers do not provide adequate controls to remove temptation and to prevent or discourage employees from engaging in unethical practices. For example, the administrative and accounting controls are given the opportunity to misappropriate funds or engage in petty thievery. So, ibig sabihin, the manager is not responsible enough to do his job. That's why he commits unethical practice. Then, number four is unfair labor practices. The labor code listed 10 unfair labor practices committed by an employer on employees or a group of employees who have organized themselves into a union. First one is to interfere with, restrain, or coerce employees in the exercise of their right to self-organization. Second is to require as a condition of employment that a person or an employee shall not join a labor organization or shall withdraw from one to which he belongs. Number three is to contract out services or functions being performed by union members when such will interfere with, restrain, or coerce employees in the exercise of their rights to self-organization. Fourth is to initiate, dominate, assist, or otherwise end with the formation or admin administration of any labor organization, including the giving of financial or other support to it. Fifth is to discriminate with regards to wages, hours of work, and other terms or conditions of employment in order to encourage or discourage membership in any labor organization. Sixth is to dismiss, discharge, or otherwise prejudice or discriminate against an employee for having given or being about to give testimony under the labor code. Seventh is to violate the duty to bargain collectively of prescribed by the labor code. Eight is to pay negotiation or attorney's fee to the union or its officers or agents as part of the settlement of any issue in collective bargaining or any other dispute. The next is to violate or refuse to comply with voluntary arbitration award awards or decisions relating to the implementation or interpretation of collective bargaining agreement. And then last is to violate a collective bargaining agreement. The number five of unethical practices, making false claims about losses to free themselves from paying the compensation and benefits provided by law. There are employers who claim not existent losses so they can be exempted from paying the minimum wage and emergency cost of living allowances required by the law. Number six is making employees sign documents showing that they are receiving fully what they are entitled to under the law when in fact they are only receiving a fraction of what they are supposed to get. Okay, for the last one, sexual harassment. Any person who commits sexual harassment in a work, training, or education environment is not acceptable. For example, it is unethical if an employer commits sexual harassment to an employee using his authority, influence, or moral ascendancy regardless of whether the other person or the employee accepts it or not. Good day everyone, my name is Angelica Oamon and I'm here to discuss some unethical practices of employees. There are some employees who are not mindful of their moral obligation to their employers. They take advantage of their position and the trust of their employees by committing unethical practices harmful to their employer's interests. These unethical practices may be classified into conflict of interest and dishonesty. Unethical employee behavior is becoming an increasingly serious problem for organizations. It can take many forms ranging from theft to disclosure of confidential information to the misrepresentation of products and services. The adverse impact of such behavior includes inventory shrinkage, lawsuits, and fines. Conflict of interest A 
conflict of interest arises when an employee who is duty bound to protect and promote the interests of his employer violates this obligation by getting himself into a situation where his decision or actuation is influenced by what he gained personally from it rather than what his employer can gain from it. Conflict of interest in the workplace refers to when a staff member takes part in activity or relationship that benefits them and not their employer. In other words, each party's personal gains are at the odds with each other. If an employee has a conflict, con if an employee has a conflict of interest, it usually affects their decision making at work, their ability to complete job duties, and their loyalty to their employer. Some common examples of conflicts of interest are a. An employee who holds a significant interest or share of stock of a competitor, supplier, customer, or dealer favors this party to the prejudice of his employer. b. The employee accepts cash, a gift, or a lavish entertainment or a loan from a supplier, customer, competitor, or contractor. In this situation, the decision or action of the employee is influenced by his being indebted for a favor or loan from a party with whom company is doing business. He therefore cannot act impartially. Employees may not accept gifts from persons or entities where any such gift is being made in order to influence their action in their position with the company or where acceptance of gift could create the appearance of a conflict of interest. C. The employee uses or discloses confidential company information for his or someone else's personal gain. Employees will encounter and learn information that can harm a company if the information is shared with others or competitors. Confidentiality is the act of being discreet and not discussing company's business with other people. Example is revealing his employer formula or menu for a well-liked food to a competitor. D. The employee engaged in the same type of business as his employer. He may attend to his business only after office hours because he has somebody to mind it for him but it is still unethical. An example is an auditor employed full-time in a public accounting firm but maintained his own auditing office where he works after office hours. E. The employee uses for his own benefit a business opportunity in which his employer has or might be expected to have an interest. Dishonesty Dishonesty is the root of most ethics problem in the workplace. Completing dishonesty act may become easier once another is completed. False confidence may be developed. Yung dishonesty and dishonest act, nagiging habit siya, ipaul ulit siyang ginagawa. A culture of lying and dishonesty is now affected to the business and society as this behavior have become more common. Some people are at the point that they don't even realize that they are dishonest and don't see anything wrong with lying. Business ethics is not just limited to business transactions with outside parties. It also covers employee-employer relationship, especially with respect to an employee's honesty as he carries out his assigned duties in the office. Example of this honest act of employees are A. Taking office supplies home for personal use B. Padding an expense account through the use of fake receipt when claiming reimbursement C. Taking credit for another employee's idea Carelessness and misuse of company property can lead to a devenish reputation or job termination Workplace dishonesty and other unethical behavior could also have personal consequences. I am Clarice Faye Avaliano and I'm here to discuss about Chapter 8, Ethical Dilemma. I know you are familiar with the word ethical dilemma as we have tackled it last semester in our ethics subject. So if you remember, 
Ethical dilemma refers to a situation a person faces wherein he or she is in the decision-making process between the two possible options that neither of the two is absolutely acceptable from an ethical standards. Bakit? Bakit walang acceptable? Kasi every available choice is wrong. Hindi naman sa literal na mali, pero lahat kasi na available na choices is may consequences. That is also the reason why ethical dilemmas are complicated. Some of the situation talaga is kailangan i-analyze ng mabuti because you cannot solve it easily. Every day we are facing a dilemmas. Like for example, kapag aalis ka, especially sa girls. In my own experience ha, ang hirap mamili kapag yung two favorite outfit mo is available. Di ba ang time consuming niya? Inaabot ako ng dalawang oras, swear. Kung iisipin nyo, nakakatawa siya. Pero doon pa lang ang complicated na na nakaharap na tayo sa dilemma. Another example is, yung patulog ka na, maayos na pwesto mo sa higaan, you are comfortable in your bed, but you suddenly, you suddenly have to pee. Nakakainis ba? Diba? Anong gagawin ko? Anong pipiliin ko? Kapag pinigil ko yung pag-ihi ko, may tendency na magkasakit ako. Pero kapag tumayo ako at pumunta sa CR, baka hindi ko na mahanap yung pwesto ko. Kung aalalahan ninyo yung mga examples na nabanggit ko, mas madali pa siya. Like what I have said, ethical dilemmas are complicated. So you already know what is ethical dilemma and its complicated situation. Let us now proceed in resolving ethical dilemmas. Hi, good day. My name is Pauline Joyce V. Artus, and let's proceed on how to solve an ethical dilemma. The most difficult aspect of an ethical dilemma is there is no simple solution that complies with ethical standards. People have faced such dilemmas throughout history and thinkers have sought and tried to find solution. That's why formal frameworks have been developed to help each people resolve ethical dilemmas. The questions here are, what is the purpose of such framework and how it can be helped to solve ethical dilemmas. The purpose of framework is for resolving ethical issues from defining the issues and parties involved to deciding on a course of action and tracking its progress. When attempting to resolve an ethical issue, here are the six steps approach that follows is intended to be a relatively simple approach to resolve ethical dilemma. First is to obtain the relevant facts and it is connected to the second step which is identify the ethical issues from the facts. You must answer this following question to attain the corresponding results that you want to gather. First, do I have all the facts relevant to the situation? Second, am I making assumption? If so, could facts be identified to replace these assumptions? And lastly, is it your problem? Can anybody else help? By the help of following these questions, you will identify your real problem and also you will be having a fax that you can use as a guide on solving your issues. The next one is determine who is affected by the outcome of the dilemma and how, ca- and how each person or group is affected. The following questions are, who are the individuals, organization, and key stakeholders affected? In what way are they are affected? Are, this com- are there are conflicts between different stakeholders? And who are your allies? After answering this question, you must identify the alternatives available to the person who must resolve the dilemma. And you should consider the following like your organization's policies, procedures and guidelines, applicable laws and regulation, and universal values and principles generally accepted by the society. And after that, identify the likely consequences of each alternative. By the consequences, test your proposed course of action, ask yourself the following questions. Have all the consequences associated with the proposed course of action been discussed and evaluated? Is there any reason why the proposed course of action should not stand the test of the time? Would a similar course of action be undertaken in a similar situation? Would the suggested course of action stand to scrutiny from peers, family, and friends? After you consider the following consequences, you must decide the appropriate action. 
When faced with an ethical issues, it may be in your best interest to document your thought processes, discussions, and decisions taken. Written records will be useful if you need to justify your course of action. So here is the example of illustrative case resolving an ethical dilemma. Bert Cruz has been working for six months as a staff assistant for a law firm, Alvin Dia and Castro. Currently, he is assigned to the case of Ryan Manufacturing Company under the supervision of Carlos Reyes, an experienced senior lawyer. There are three junior legal of assistants assigned to the case, including Bert, Carlos, and more experienced assistant, Marty C. During lunchtime on the first day, Carlos says, It will be necessary for us to work a few hours on our own time to make sure we come in a budget. This case isn't very profitable anyway, and we don't want to hurt our firm by going over budget. We can accomplish this early by coming in a half hour early, taking a short lunch break, and working an hour so after normal quitting time. We just won't write that time down on our time report. Bert recalls reading in the firm's policy manual that working hours and not charging for them on the time report is a valuation of Alvin Dia and Castro employment policy. He also knows that seniors are paid bonuses instead of overtime, where our staffs are paid for overtime but not get bonuses. Later, when discussing the issue with Marta, she says Carlos that this on all of his job, he is likely to be our firm's next manager. The partner thinks he is great because his job always comes in under budget. He rewards us by giving us good engagement evaluation, especially under the cooperative attitude category. Several of the other senior staff follow the same practice. In this situation or case, there are three junior legal assistants na nangaharap sa complicated situation, including Bert na staff assistant sa law firm na Alvencia and Castro, Carlos na supervisor na Ryan Manufacturing Company, and Marta na more experienced assistant. In this situation, they want the Ryan Manufacturing Company to come in on budget, or ayaw nila na mas lumaki pa yung gastos ng firm nila, so they need to do something. Carlos said that they can accomplish it by coming in a half hour early, taking a short lunch break, and working an hour or mag-overtime sila, but they will not go in to report it in their time report. However, yung presente Carlos no working hours and not charging them on the time report is a violation that is stated in Alventia and Castro employment policy. Ethical issue. The ethical issue here is, tama ba for Bert na magtrabaho ng lagpas sa oras na normal time of work niya without recording it to his time report? Next is, who is affected and how is each affected? There are typically more people affected in situation in which ethical dilemmas occur than would normally be expected. The following are the key persons involved in this situation. The first person is Bert, so how is he affected? He is affected for being asked to violate firm policy for not recording in their time report. Hours of work will be affected. Pay will be affected. If you notice, walang sinabi dito kung babayarin sila sa overtime. Ang sinabi lang is magtatrabaho sila pero hindi i-record. So may tendency na magtatrabaho sila without getting paid. Next is performance evaluations may be affected. How? So may sinabi dito si Marta na nire-rewardan sila ni Carlos by giving good engagement evaluations. The performance of Bert will be affected kasi tataas yung ratings or evaluations sa kanya for working an art. And then, attitude about fear may be affected. Yung attitude ni Bert towards sa firm can be either negative or positive. Kasi yung tingin niya, pwedeng nagagalingan siya kasi yung mga empleyado is nagtatrabaho without getting paid to make sure na yung firm is come in on budget. Pwede yung tingin niya maging pangit sa firm. Kasi para lang ma-accomplish yung gusto nilang mangyari, pinagsasawalang bahala nila yung policy. Parang ang labas dito is tinitake advantage yung mga empleyado. Next is Marta. Marta will be affected like how affected Bert is. Next is Carlos. The success of Carlos on engagement and in fear may be affected. Hours of work will be affected. Alvin Dia and Castro is affected by stated firm policies being violated may result in underbilling clients in the current and future engagement, may affect the firm's ability to realistically 
budget engagement and build clients may affect the firm's ability to motivate and retain employees. By the staffs assigned to Ryan Manufacturing in the future, they are affected and may result in an unrealistic time budget, may result in unfavorable time performance evaluation, and may result in pressures to continue practice of not charging for hours work. The other staff in the firm are affected by the following practice of this engagement and motivate others to follow the same practice on other engagement. Bird's available alternatives are the things he can do about the situation. Bird can refuse to work the additional hours or perform the things Carlos requested. Bird can inform Carlos that he will not work the additional hours or ipapabayad niya yung additional hours na ilalaan niya to the engagement. Bird can also talk to manager or partner about Carlos' request or Bird can refuse to work on the engagement and lastly, he can quit working for the firm. Sa mga alternatives na provided, each of these includes a potential consequences. For Bird, kailangan niyang i-analyze lahat yan at piliin yung pinakamay konting effect doon sa career niya. Consequences of each alternative in resolving ethical dilemmas, it is really challenging because of the things and phrases you need to consider. It is essential to evaluate both the short and long-term effects or consequences. For example, consider the potential consequences if Bert decides to work additional hours and not report them. In short term, pwede siya magkaroon ng magandang evaluation for his cooperation to the engagement. While in long term, kapag nalaman na vinaviolate niya yung policy, yung reputation niya is pwedeng masira and mas worse pa is yung management mismo yung magpatanggal sa kanya. Here are some ethical dilemma that Bert might face as he advances on his career. A supervisor asks Bert to work 3 unreported hours daily and 15 unreported hours each week. A supervisor asks Bert to initial certain procedures as having been performed when they were not. Bert concludes that he cannot be promoted to manager unless he persuades assistant to work hours that they do not report. Management informs Bert, who is now a partner, that either the company gets a 400,000 legal fee or the company will change lawyers. Management informs Bert that the legal fee will be increased 50,000 if Bert can find a plausible way to increase probability or winning the case. Appropriate Action only Bird can decide the appropriate option to select the best solution in the ethical dilemmas he is facing because in our point of view, if Bird decides to accept the request even though he knows that it is a violation, most of us would conclude that Bert is an ethical person. And when he refused the request or to work in that engagement, many people would consider such an extreme reaction naive. And this is how we end our discussion. Thank you so much.